Hello. Taking a break in the coffee shop, chilling for a second with my homies. Tiff. Hi. Hey. And that's Krista. So anyway, I'm here to talk to you for just a second about this. Rico GR2. If you want to pick up a Rico GR2, they're awesome cameras. Love them. Been messing with the Rico for a while. But I got the GR2. If you think if you have a Rico GR1 and you're gonna think about getting a Rico GR2, I don't know if you want the stuff, it's fine. But if you want to get it for Wi-Fi, the app sucks. You know, that's it. Just it's period. If you're using Sony, then you know the Sony app's awesome. Well, this app sucks. So yeah. If you have something you want to mess with the app, then fine. If not, then just get the Rico if you want to just be on the street and you want to get something. This is basically a 7D in your pocket. So, and it's a lot lighter than a 7D. It's a crop sensor. Unless you have the money to buy a like a Q or something like that. Or, you know, one of the Sony's. And then hey, this little sucker will do the job. So just a quick tip, if you got any questions, then go ahead and ask me, because I'll tell you all about it. I've been playing with this thing for a while, and I like it. What I like about it is that it's light. It also looks like a tourist camera. So if anybody's asking me, hey, what are you taking a picture of? I just say, oh, not you. And then they're like, oh, okay. Or I just make a noise like this, like, they say, hey, what are you taking a picture of? And I'm like, why are you taking pictures? That's what they say sometimes. And I'll say, oh, no, no, speak of English. And they'll be like, okay. And that's all. Rico GR. Also, see that ghetto rig I put on it? See that? Look close. You know what that is? Paracord. Took me about an hour to get that paracord stuck in that hole. It sucks. But if you have someone that will help you, fine but anyway so I just heated it up makes it like that it's a ghetto rig that's what's up so it looks like a stealthy little bastard it's amazing for you know just walking around the streets and people think you got a little snapper thing going on a little snapshotty thing but it's literally like I said a 7d in your pocket um, it's cute it's crop censored and it's awesome and I say pick one up pick one up but if you can get it if you already have a GR though don't waste your time getting a GR2 unless you want Wi-Fi because I don't know why the hell you would even need it seriously I mean if you're too fucking lazy to take your damn thing out and plug it in or get your fucking thing you can't get film out of this I was gonna say film you can't get your fucking pictures off this thing then you're like I don't know lazy or something but anyway if you want an app that works with this, it's not gonna happen. The app is horrible, a horrible, horrible Rico app. Please Rico, fix this app. It's just, just horrid. Now if you have a Sony, you know that the Sony app is awesome. So, why is this light shining in my eyeballs? I don't like that. I don't like when it does that. It's some kind of weird glow on me like I'm awesome or something. Could be. But this is the GR2, I like it. If you notice it's extended a little bit, it's because it has a dust on it. Here, I'm going to show you something real quick, like. Here, hold this for me. Okay, pull this out. There you go. Okay, if you can see this, it snaps right off. It's an extension. I put a B&W filter on it. Stop moving it, please. Thankful. Thanks for these people that I just grabbed to do this for me. I don't know, strangers. I like strangers to do things for me. That sounds weird. Well, I'm just joking. But anyway, this I just put a BMW filter on it. Also, this is the main reason why I put I bought this. Okay, it's not just to protect this, but also if you watch, see that that collects dust inside there. Every time you have that and it pumps out, pumps in, you can collect dust in there. So that's why you put this thing on. It's awesome. If you can get it on. Little sucker goes in there somehow. I don't mess with it too much. Never take it off, but it pops on. And you're good to go. And it's, it's pretty durable. Seriously. I beat the shit out of the thing going. Yeah. 
Yeah, I beat the hell out of that thing. Uh, it's got dents all over it, and it's pretty durable. Uh, batteries. You definitely need batteries. Get like three or four batteries for this thing, because they go out really quick. So, but, you know, it's worth it. Throw it in your pocket. It really fits in your pocket quick. Or just throw it around your neck, you know, whatever. But it's a stealthy camera, and it's, it's, a, it's a cool second camera to be carrying around and messing around with. So I recommend it. I like it. It's awesome. If you have any questions about it, just go ahead and ask me. I'll answer any question you want about this camera. It's awesome. It's also got um, kind of a digital built-in ND filter, which I don't really know. I mean, it seemed to work a little bit for me, but, I mean, nothing works better than just a fucking ND filter, you know, that you can put on the outside of this. So you can go ahead and just grab these and go. Uh, I mean, I, I shot... Um, I, I, I printed shots from this thing, and I printed them up to what? What was it, the last one we printed? No. The highest we printed with this Rico. What's the highest? I don't know. No clue. I'll have to check on that. But I think it was like 28 by something or whatever. I don't know. She should know this stuff. I don't know. Thir what is it? 28 by 32. So yeah. Anyway, this thing's awesome. Pick it up. It's really cool. It fits right in your pocket, and it'll do anything that you want it to do. If you need anything more than this, then I don't know. I mean, for street photography, it'll do it. I like the 28 millimeter lens. It's really, really cool. I don't like this fucking light, though. This light's pissing me off. Is that light doing that to you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a weird glow. Where's that coming from? Oh. <laughs> It could be the light above us, you know? It just it could be that. Oh, uh, it says, okay, 35 millimeter DSLR dropping this month. Uh, nice GR. Yeah, uh, do you shoot raw formatted JPEG? Oh, God, I have to shoot raw. There's no damn. I'm getting away from this fucking light, though. Come on. Let's go, folks. Yeah, go ahead and ask me that question out here. We're going to go out. It's on the street. So, anyway. Yeah, we're out here. We got arguments earlier. It was pretty cool. Fights almost. Fighting on the streets and fighting in this trailer park. It's pretty crazy. We were shooting up in there. It's still doing that light thing. It's something to do with this damn thing. Oh, because it's, it's blinking. You know what this shit is? It's the connection's weak. That's what. That's what. Hold on. If you guys got a weak connection, I'm going to probably connect it back up. Hey, do I shoot in raw, though? Um, yeah, always shooting raw. Always shooting raw. Why? Is it 24? Yeah, it's back now, finally. But yeah, you look crazy on there. You look like a scary witch. See? She looked. She didn't really, she didn't really look like that too much, like in real life, do you? No, I don't think so. My hair's. Well, Krista, crazy. come here. Krista looks like she's like a sailor or something, like that guy that gives fish sticks to people. <laughs> I'm just cold. You're the guy that gives sti fish sticks to people. You got fish sticks? No. You got fish sticks, bro? No, I don't. Well, he didn't have any fish sticks. I don't want any anyway. I just ate, so I'm fine. But yeah, uh, let's see. Also, what do you use uh, to do your black and white conversions? Oh, I just, I go to Photoshop, and then I click on this thing, and it says black and white. Bam, done. Or I'm shooting with a Leica that's already monochrome. Bam, done. So, yeah, whatever he said. I don't even fucking know this dude. But anyway. But yeah, I'm out on the streets, and I like I like to shoot as much as I can, everything in there. Only thing I do is maybe at all, light, light dodging and burning at all, like just that. But I shoot a lot of high contrast, which you can set the settings in this thing. You gotta see the menu. I'm not really kind of one of those type of people that do reviews on shit. I'm just giving you my opinion on it, okay? If you want one of those review things, then you can go to the, uh, the guy with the big afro, Frodo's cameras and shit. And I don't know what else he knows, but he, you know, it's cool. So just go check him out or something. I don't even know if he knows anything about a fucking Rico. But because, I don't know, last time I saw him, he was messing with the Nikon or whatever. But this thing is badass. It's definitely worth the money. It's like 600 bucks or some shit. You could probably get one used. It's definitely worth your money. Go out and buy the damn thing. Because, I mean, just throw it in your pocket. Just throw it in your pocket. It's seriously worth it. It's completely worth it. If you have any other questions about this camera, it's just let me know. I mean, of course, you know, I'm, I love Leica and, you know, I'm... But, I mean, 
if you want a secondary camera to pop in your pocket and you want something that you can carry around like on uh, in dangerous places that you might not want to take your Leica, I don't know, um, then take this because you can just say, here, you want a camera? Here. You want a free one? See? They don't even want this camera. I'm trying to give it away for free. You want a free one? Free camera? See? They don't want it. So, see? They don't want it because they don't know what it does. But it does do what it's supposed to do. But, yeah, we printed some pretty good quality images from them. Um, I'll post some images from that camera. But, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. What's up? Want a free camera? So, yeah, I want a free camera. See, oh, see, he'll take the free fucking camera now. Yeah, I'll take a free camera. What you mean? <laughs> see? But this camera, this camera to you, does this look like an expensive camera? Yeah. Well, or like a, just a, like a toy. It looks like I'm like ghetto with this thing. It looks pretty huh? cool. I like it. But I mean, it doesn't look like it's like, you that, know, yeah, expensive though, right? No, it looks kind of like a normal camera. Yeah, yeah. It's like a normal, like, something. See, so that's that's what's cool about this thing. Is, I mean, people don't know about this camera. They just You look like a fucking tourist. You can get away with the shit, right? <laughs> that's kind of cool. Yeah. That is... I mean, nobody wants to steal it. And if they do, who cares? It's 600 bucks. Throw it the fuck away. And if you ain't making 600 bucks off doing photography, well, then, you know, you need to you get another fucking job or yeah. something. I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, it take me a lot of money, you know, to get 600 bucks. I got to strip at the strip club and shit, man. I got to put all my dollars together to get this like and shit. You know, you know how it has to work like that, you know? Yeah. You got to work the pole, right? You got to work the pole. Yeah. <laughs> one I mean, of those days. That's what you do. It's one of those things. But, <laughs> give my call. But, yeah, nice to meet you. Just give me my call. Oh, But, anyway, <laughs> so, but it's fun to meeting people, you know. I don't know who the fuck that is. But, um... Anyway, it's cool meeting people, so, you know, we're always out on the street, and I like to take time out from shooting, just, to, you know, run in and talk to people and just mess around, and uh, hit it up with you guys, and just hang out, and, you know, let's see what's going on. I'm doing a lot more videos these days, because uh, my buddy Tiff's been out of the hospital. She just had a full hip replacement, didn't you, Tiff? Yes, I did, and I'm doing so much better now. So, now I'm walking around, having fun, shooting photos with them. Oh! We have another question. question. Okay, yeah. what's the question? Uh, my GR2 fits perfectly in a neoprene beer koozie right down in my pack. It's cheap protection. I leave the like at home when on the trail. Oh. Yeah, that's perfect, man. I love you because you are doing the exact same thing I'm doing. It's smart. I mean, it's smart. And it shoots like a... I mean, it, it does what it needs to do. I'm not upset if I see a shot that I'm going, oh, wow, I got to get that shot. I mean, you know, bam, it's I got to get it. The only problem I have with this is it's 2.8. Man, Rico, if you can do something about that 2.8, at least bring it down to a 1.4. I mean, something like that. Even a 1.7, you know, like, you know... If you can do something like that, that would be even great. Because, see, I'm a night shooter, you know, and there's a lot of other people that like to shoot at night, you know. And that's, that's we got we got to have that. Because high ISO, I don't know about you, Ben, but I'm having a problem sometimes with the high ISO. I mean, I'm not shooting higher than 16, you know. I mean, 16, and, and it's limiting me a little bit, a little bit, you know. Because a lot of street lights and a lot of stuff like that, I'm good to go, you know. But if I shoot down a back alley or something like that, I'm going to have to blow a flash on somebody. And I'm going to have to pull the mace out or some shit sometimes, you know, if I'm throwing flashes on people. So what's up? But, you know, if you're just if you're just fucking around and, you, you know, you're out shooting, and which I'm out, like, at least. I don't know. What, what are we out? 12 plus hours Yeah, 12 plus hours a day, you know, out shooting. Um, you know, this thing's awesome. Plus... You know, I keep all, I keep my Leica in the car, and then I also keep um, Canon 5D Mark III in the car, you know, if I want to do some video stuff. Uh, I've got that, uh, you know, but usually I'm just out here shooting, you know, still photography. I'm not really doing video a lot other than what I'm doing now, which I'm going to do a lot more of, uh, you know, answering questions and doing a lot of stuff. We're going to do a real big, cool street walk for charity pretty soon um, where we're going to do a camera and street walk, and we're going to be giving away a cool camera, which is, uh, what's the camera we're giving away? Sorry, it's a Fuji something. Fuji what is it? X, uh, 100T. X100T is what we're giving away. So that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, grain is good though. Yeah, grain's awesome. I don't have a problem with grain. I mean, you know, see, man, yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm gonna check out your stuff definitely because I probably have already. I'm just, I just can't tell by it because it's really small and I. That's why I shoot photography so I can see. Oh, see, I'm used to that. Like it, you know. Sometimes I do do that. I don't know if you do that, but do you ever, do you ever throw the Rico up in your eye like that? I do that all the time. 
I mean, it, yeah, happens. But yeah, I'm gonna have to check out some of your stuff because I like the way you talk about the grain. Because the shot is the shot, you know. I'm not a pixel peeper. I'm a person that just likes what, you know, you capture the moment. It looks good, and you got what you want, you know. And you're getting the art, and your your composition's correct, is you know. And then you just understand, you know. Hey, I can break the rules if I need to after I already know them all, you know. Um, you know that kind of thing. I want to make sure that the sh that, that when you look at it, it goes, oh, whoa. I'm interested, you know, and that's just pretty much how I shoot and how I think. So yeah, grain doesn't mean shit to me, man. Even if I blow it up big, you know, hey, if you can't see it close enough, then stand back, motherfucker, you know. It's definitely the way it's got to go. But yeah, I want to check out your stuff. Um, but yeah, the Rico, if anybody has any, uh, does anybody have the A7R2? Anybody in here that have the A7R2 right now? Oh, you do? Oh, you do that. Oh, shit, it must be lagging a little bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you're talking about the thing. Yeah, putting it up to your eye. I do that so much. I mean, I constantly am like, oh, shit. Oh, shit, I'm looking for that framing. But, yeah, definitely need, yeah, I need to get a viewfinder for it, too. But they have a cool one uh, that you can get. Uh, I think it's Voight. Voight's got a really good one. Um, hey, what's up? How you doing? Say hi. Hello. Oh, God damn it, that's YouTube. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not YouTube, but anyway, I'm supposed to be doing some YouTube stuff, but man, I just, I, I can't stop shooting photos to do all this stuff, you know, green looks good on black and white for sure, yeah, I mean, I love the way, yeah, Andy, I'll tell you, man, I love the way black and white looks, you know, I, li I like to shoot color sometimes, but if I shoot color, it has to be something that just really makes sense to me, though, you know, um, it just has to make sense to me because I see like in black and white, like like these guys walking by, I see exactly what's black, what's white, what's different grayscales, what's going on with it. Boom, 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 as fast as, you know. And when I see the colors, it just bothers me. It's in my face and it's annoying. And whenever I see someone's colored photos, sometimes, you know, if they're not done correctly, I, I kind of see it. It's kind of just taking over the photo too much to me. So it's nothing about, oh, hey, you know, I'm doing it old school. I, you know, I, I just like black and white the way I see it. I mean, I love the way I see shadows and the way I see light, you know. And I think it portrays art really well in the way I want to show it. Like, see, if you see the way my shadow is right now, see, and you see it going up and down. And that's what's going on. And see, that's what I just like. I like looking for that. You know, I like seeing that. And you can see that in color, too. And, and uh, I like to I like to be able to blend colors that way, too, uh, when I see things like that. But it's just pretty much a lot of people, they use color to their advantage. So, oh, it's so pretty there, you know, and that's not my thing, you know. It's just not my thing to make. I think everything's beautiful that I shoot anyway, even if people think, damn, that's ugly or some that's really fucked up looking or whatever, or that person's ugly. Or they say what they want to about some of the things, but everything that I shoot I think is beautiful, you know, or I think is very interesting, obviously, you know, and that's just that's what I do. I don't like a lot of times that people take photo, uh, you know, color photos and they don't really see the black and white, but they shoot them anyway. And then they just convert it to black and white and they say, Oh, I got a black and white fucking color. I got a black and white photo. No, you don't. You just got a fucking colored photo. You turn black and white. You gotta, you gotta understand what the contrasts are, you know, and stuff like that. You know, just do your homework or some shit. I don't fucking know. Or, or otherwise just see it for yourself. But anyway, what do you think, Krista? What's up? Oh, here's, uh, What's up? Uh, black and white leaves uh, imagination also. Yeah, I think it, yeah, yeah, Dylan, I think that's exactly right. I think to me, it's like, you know, going to see a two hour fucking movie. It's not that extreme. Okay, okay. Now, there are some color people, people that I like, like uh, Alex Webb. Alex Webb does amazing. And uh, Harvey. You know, uh, he does an amazing, they, they do amazing work with color too. Uh, and I love it. And I love what Gildan just did with, uh, with the faces that he did. He did, uh, um, yeah, um, the faces. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, go definitely go check them out. Um, but yeah, the colors are really good. And, and I like to do that too. It's just, it's not really, I don't know. It's just not really my thing. You know, I'm good at it. I could put some up to show you, but I'm going to make a folder for it because I don't want it to mess up my motif you know what I'm saying so I don't know it's just what I do but yeah it's kind of it it's kind of like going to see a two-hour movie 
and you know you can't really get the book so when you read the book you're just like oh I don't see any visuals or, or hear any sounds that from a score that tell me what's going on I have to look at it and, and say whoa that's the story and that's and and also I like black and white because it really brings out the definition in a lot of things that you don't see when you see the colors because you're looking too much at the colors and this I'm talking about for not not for people that understand art or understand photos I'm talking about people that just look at pictures you know and just look at things uh, you know because everybody needs to understand art and and, and give the, get the opportunity to be able to look at things correctly and and you know, hopefully we can bring a lot more people into doing that these days, uh, because photography it's it's a t it's a tough it's a tough game for a lot of people. Um, you know, you got to be really tough with photography nowadays. I mean, you have to have fun. You have to shoot what you want to shoot, but you have to. It's a tough game because everybody has an iPhone. Everybody has uh, this and that and this kind of camera and that kind of camera, and you can shoot with almost anything. And everybody's calling themselves photographers, blah blah. blah. And, but it's it's a tough game. It's kind of like for graphic design. Gra a lot of graphic designers are having a tough time right now because people are downloading fake Photoshop you know copies and stuff like that and then they're calling themselves graphic designers and they're designing people CD covers and stuff like that and they're charging like 50 bucks or something and it looks like shit but people you know there's they're still doing it man I mean they're, they're buying that shit and it's it, it it steals the money from the people that have busted their ass for years on this stuff but you know I'm just gonna ramble on about that shit for a while so I'm gonna stop you know right now because you don't want me to get started on that that, that pisses me off kind of but you know it's like you know, you can tell the difference though in quality, and there are people out there that will, uh, you know, purchase your art for the quality. You know, not just the quality of what maybe you do, but the quality of who you are as well as a person. Um, you know, because if your art, if your art speaks, if you can speak through your art, and that's the quality of your essence coming through, then it's kind of like you're looking at yourself in a mirror that you're shooting because. Uh, you know, I try to help out a lot of homeless people, and uh, I've been doing that since I was a little kid. And, you know, it's just, you got the questions ready to go? That next one? Okay. Let's see here. Um, but yeah, I've been helping out people. So you see a lot of that in my work. Ugly shit is gorgeous. I enjoy some black and white principles with nightmare color uh, stuff. I'm not part of it. Okay, shadows, black and white is kind of working. Purposeful color cast. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think. I think. Th I think that is true. You know. Yeah. I enjoy some as much as I can read. Can you read that to me? Um, ugly shit is gorgeous. I enjoy okay. using some black and white principles with nighttime color stuff. I'm not fighting the WB. White balance. Oh, white balance. Deep yeah. shadows, blacks, kind of murky, and purposeful color cast. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Now, if you can do that, then that's really great. You know. And you know it's it's cool. I just to me, I don't know. I just I just have to see black. I just see black and white, and you know, so it's easier for me. Because when I see colors, it's just like kind of. Oh hey, that's cool. Oh hey, that's cool. Oh hey, that's pretty. Oh hey, that's cool. You know, but it it have to be one hell of a fucking shot to make me shoot just direct color all the time. You know, I'd have to really be in a place like landscapes. Landscapes. I shoot a lot of landscapes in black and white too. Um, I don't really show them that much, but I shoot a lot of it, a lot of them, and um, I'll probably put some more up. But I, I, I haven't really put a lot up on Facebook or social media. I, I have a, over eight terabytes of, um, of work in like three different um, places that are stored. But I just make sure that you know I keep it, keep a little bit of stuff on the side. You know what I mean? I just play, I like to post though the social media so that some people can see some of the stuff that I have, and if they like it, cool. If not, I just I, I do it because I want to kind of have other people uh, see what I'm doing, you know, and just keep in touch, and then that way I can meet other people like you guys, like Andy and uh, you know and, uh, and Ben, you know, and I can meet you guys and see what your work is because you know that's how you meet people. Social media, you know, it's not really about my art I'm putting up. It's about hey, look, this is what I do. If you like it, you got an idea of the same things that you know I might be doing, or if you can, you need some help from what I'm doing, and I can maybe explain something to you. Then great, you know, I, I'd love to help you if I have time, you know. But yeah, it's getting really noisy here, and it smells like fucking like shit because these people stink. Some of them, not all of them. Some girl can walk by and smell pretty damn all right, right? Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I don't even know if you saw her. But anyway, this is Tiff. But yeah, I'm definitely going to check out your stuff. Do you guys have work and stuff that I can look at? If you if you do, go ahead and post it. Go ahead and post it right now. Post it right here. Post it right here in your comment. I'll put a link to your page so I can go check it out. And everybody else here can go check it out. And everybody come see this video can check it out. Just say my portfolio, boom, and put it in there. Uh, and then we're going to be also giving away that camera too. Uh, what, next week or the week after? What is it? The week after next, we'll be giving away the camera. So we'll be doing some more videos about that. But I want you to talk to Tiff real quick about some of the uh, projects that um, we have going on in the summer. Okay, so uh, this summer he has um, Rural America Living, which is going to be an amazing project. I can't go into a lot of detail because he's partnered up with some people and so we get all the details ironed out. We can't talk about it. But um, he does have two more books coming out this year. Three possibly. So we have some really cool projects. Um, Street Kids coming out, um, which is, they're amazing. He's um, blowing out the backgrounds. I mean, it looks amazing. So we have Street Kids. We have Saturday Night Tats, and he has um, a cool series called Travelers. And so um, those are all coming out in publications this year. And then he has a huge exhibit coming up this summer. He has a 55-piece exhibit coming up in June. It's going to uh, debut on June 30th. It's going to be an eight-week exhibit. And so, um, yeah, and the exhibit will travel across the United States. When we have all those dates and locations, we'll post them on his Facebook or his website. So you guys can go check it out. Um, and then if you guys have more questions, just let us know. Um, he'll ask, he'll answer all your questions that you need to know. Yeah, I do, I do. Yeah, so if you guys um, want to post your Andy, Ben, anybody else who's in here that does art, post, post a link to your site, post a link to your uh, fan page if you have one, and let's check it out because I know he'll love to look at your art. I'd love to see it as well. Um, we're always interested in meeting up and, and talking and discussing things with other artists and photographers. Um, and you know doing a lot of things um, together as far as projects so we're um, you know just some cross promotion we love to see what other artists are doing so yeah charity work and oh work. yes we have uh, the do you talk about the no, I didn't talk about Twitch, no. oh you didn't okay so we have a huge I'm just, so I'm gra I'm just grabbing something to drink real quick That's all. okay so um, we have two charity things we have the charity photo walk coming up and then we also have the charity Twitch stream. So what we're doing is he's partnering with twitch.tv um, coming up in May. And so it's going to be a huge event. It's going to be about two weeks long. Um, we're going to stream each day for two weeks to raise money for um, a cause called D&D &D Sanctuary. So what it is, it's an um, animal sanctuary and it's ran by an older couple. And what they do is they rescue animals um, exotic animals. I'm talking about like ligers and barbarian lions and, and things that um, are super rare, rare and nobody can home them um, or they buy exotic animals and then they can't take care of them. So, um, But they run it all by themselves and so um, they don't have a lot of funds to um, take care of themselves and the habitats for the animals and the only time they get volunteers is a couple students every year during the school year and then the winter and the summer they run it all by themselves so we're gonna help raise money for them they're a very nice couple they've also dealt with some illnesses um, with his wife and so we're gonna raise as much money as we can to help them um, because what they do is very very important and they put everything into it I mean it's just the two of them and so um, they really touched our hearts when we met them a couple years ago so we're gonna do whatever we can to help them and if you want to be involved um, just follow Lavelli's page and you can find out all the details because we'll be posting the stream. Um, Twitch.tv is going to do some huge promotion uh, for the event as well. They're going to post it on their Twitter. They're going to post it on the homepage of Twitch.tv. And um, yeah, so it's going to be a big event. And then uh, the photo walk also, we're going to be raising money for that as well. So um, we're going to choose uh, 25 photographers to go on the photo walk. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those photos. Um, and make a publication out of each of the 25 photographers involved and uh, that's gonna raise money too. So we have a lot of exciting things going on and um, like I said, Lavelli is always interested in meeting new people. So if you want to send us a message on this page um, and you wanna be involved in the things that we're doing or you just want him to look at your work and maybe talk about it if you have questions, um, he'll love to answer them. So yeah, we have a lot going on. Um, 
some of you are joining you might not know who I am I'm Tiffany and I handle um, all of his affairs partner up with his agent and manager so I kind of do all the coordinating and communicating with them to make things happen so yeah but uh, let's see what else do we have going on um, yeah we just have a lot a lot going on with the induction to the museum that um, he just had so he just got uh, three never released photos inducted into the historical museum so he's gonna post some pictures and videos of that so you guys can see them it's a big big deal all you photographers know how big of a deal it is to get your work into a museum so we're really 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 excited about that um, we'd love to come shoot with you guys share work when you guys out about um, we are out every single day our schedule does change a lot depending on who we're working with we work with a lot of people um, overseas so sometimes we're on a schedule where we're like up all night like we'll wake up in the afternoon we'll be up all night shooting and working and then we'll go to sleep in the morning but right now we're on a schedule where we're kind of up you know we get up like normal people in the morning and we'll shoot all afternoon and all evening and so that's kind of what we're on now so um, yeah just shoot me over uh, or message um, his inbox on his page your contact information and then what you are interested in doing and um, yeah and then we'll get a hold of you yeah so um, yeah just your contact information and all that sorry some douchebag just walked by uh, and said something very rude <laughs> so um, yeah so just send us your contact information will get a hold of you, Andy, for sure. Because he's always loves talking to other artists and shooting and kind of just mixing things up, you know? Because he has a very ex distinct style. I'm sure you have a style. I'd love to see your work. Um, I'll have to click. I don't know. Do you have work on your page here, your personal page, or do you have like a Facebook fan page that's just for your artwork? I am freezing. Oh man, they said it was like 60 degrees today. It was not 60 degrees. It was very, very cold. And I am freezing. I do not have a good coat on right now. Because it's supposed to be springtime. It's not supposed to be this cold right now. Whew. But yeah. So that's pretty much what we have going on. Um, if you do live in the area, we'll post up details about the museum so you guys can go visit it if you want. Um, they did um, a really, really nice display and installation of his pieces. Um, so it's um, at the Historical Museum. We'll post all the details soon. I know. I know. They're really not too bad tonight, to be honest. Um, but, you know, some of them always run their mouth and they have to talk shit to people. But... Um, we always carry pepper spray. <laughs> I've had a couple um, crazy situations. So, um, yeah, well, one time we had a guy that tried to take the camera. I was videotaping Lavelli while he was shooting, and uh, this guy thought I was videotaping him, and I wasn't, obviously. Um, and he tried to take the camera out of my hand. Like, I had it up to my face, tried to take it out of my hand. And uh, so I gave him a good kick in the between the legs and uh, had a pepper spray him so that was interesting <laughs> but yeah we've had people um, just do think we had actually somebody throw a bottle at us a couple weeks ago um, but yeah but we have the cops some of our caught friends on speed dial so we can usually take care of those situations pretty quickly but things do get crazy um, I'm sure if any of you guys do street photography you've ran into some interesting people maybe some <laughs> crazy situations like that if you had tell us about it I love to hear it because it's interesting to see what people run into you know being in a smaller town has been very interesting because you know they always think that you're up to something you're doing something suspicious or you know obviously you're not but um, yeah it just gets kind of kind of crazy you know in New York, you know, you go out there and shoot and they don't even think twice. They're like, oh, another street photographer, you know? But in the smaller towns, people think you're doing something crazy and sometimes they're not welcoming, but sometimes they are, you know? And sometimes they, some of the people just take a little talking too and then they're like, oh, that looks really cool, okay. You know, that's really neat. We've had a lot of those situations too where at first they'll think, you know, they'll get mad and then I'll talk to them or Lavelle will talk to them and 
and they'll be like, oh, that's really cool, you know, I, I don't know much about photography, but that's badass, you know, and that happens a lot too, so, but do you guys have any interesting encounters that you've had with people or, I don't know, maybe you do nature photography and you ran into some crazy animals or just something crazy that you've kind of seen while shooting photography. I'd love to know it. Man, the wind is the worst right now. Lavelli's in there. I think he's getting something to drink real quick. I should probably go inside, but the music was kind of kind of loud and annoying in there. But um, but yeah. Um, let's see. There's a big crowd of people. Maybe I'll scoot in here. But yeah, so do you guys have any questions? I know a little bit about photography. I mostly handle all of the marketing and PR and arranging and client relations and magazines and stuff. I do all the business stuff and he does all the art stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. We were just talking about there was a douchebag out there that was being rude. He yelled. No, he's gone now, but he Damn it. Why not? Why? Why? We gotta, we gotta go after bags. Bags. What's up? He walked by, he was like, bitch, so, grow hey. up. And of course, you know I don't like being called uh, yeah, the B word. But we'll take care of them. So yeah, she was uh, gonna cover that. Uh, tell them about the, they probably don't know anything about the one block thing. She was gonna cover the one block thing. Oh. Oh, Al. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, funny how that worked out. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, some of you guys might know, but Lavelli had a big exhibit um, actually in an alley right down the road here um, in October for his book One Block. So what he did was he worked four years on this series and he spent four years shooting just a small stretch of street and got some amazing photos of just the small... Oh, there we go. We're back. No, but anyway, so he spent four years shooting this street called Ninth Street. So it's a super eclectic, fun street. You never know what you're going to find, but he spent four years shooting it and got some amazing work. I mean, people that live here were, would not believe that it was Ninth Street. They're like, that was not here, you know? It looks, I mean, it's just crazy what you see and what, um, I think that's, that's the beauty of it is that, um, you know, you... A lot of people walk by these things that he shoots and he sees the beauty in everything, you know, and a lot of people take these things for granted. And so I think that's what's so special about his work is that he's able to capture these things that a lot of us would walk by and not notice. So it kind of opens our eyes up to the things that are around us and really brings happiness and emotion um, to our lives so we can even enjoy what he's capturing. Let me, I'm just reading your comment, Andy, hold on, let me see. Uh, uh, What? Oh my God, that sounds crazy. No, we actually, okay, so we were driving in the country and there was this like abandoned, it looked like maybe it was like some sort of store, um, but it was super abandoned. So we walked in there and we didn't know what we were gonna find. So we walked in, we noticed that there was just, I mean, there was just random, random stuff all over this abandoned building, right? And so when we first walked in, we realized there was like a lot of tools and stuff. It's like, oh, well maybe this was like abandoned hardware store. That's what it looked like. And so, and then we walked further in and there was like a mattress in the corner. And then there was like a uh, scuba, like flippers, like diving flippers. And then we went to this table. Hey, what's up? And then we went to this uh, hey, table that was back in the room and there was this like saw there, but next to the saw was like this mannequin's head that was so, so, so creepy. And um, you can actually see it on his page. And we didn't touch it. The way he shot that photo is the way that we found that mannequin next to that saw on the tool table. Like why is this creepy mannequin's head next to the saw? Are you alive right now? Yeah. <laughs> He's live right now. Yeah, we're live. Good way. <laughs> Jesse James in the building, man. You already know everything custom. Kiss Scarlet in the building. From the Nexuses to the jeans to the third eye belt, man. <laughs> it's your boy Will Owens out here, man. Hit me up on Instagram. Will Owens, you know what it is. <laughs> Voices, bro. Check them out. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> So yeah, that was really, really weird, that mannequin head. So, and I think that was probably the least expected thing we've kind of found. I mean, we've definitely ran into super interesting people. And, um, but yeah, so we try to like, um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that we ran into that was super weird. And there's been so many. That mannequin head was really, really creepy. I know there was, let me see, I'll think of it. There's just been so many weird things that we've seen. It's kind of hard to remember them all. But that chicken feet, that is so 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 weird and so creepy but there was actually talking about homeless camps there was this homeless camp that uh, we found that um, we were gonna we searched through for his transient project which is one of his theories and uh, these guys had actually made like a full like blown shelter and they had like um, oh crap what's that thing called um, they actually had like built a chimney in the house like the small house that they built uh, with like a wood stove and everything and it was just in the middle of this woods and there was this huge camp I mean it was crazy because like you you might not notice it but we if you drive like and you would look along the highway you would see um, like the smoke coming from this chimney of this like really small like cabin that they just built out of like random parts so it was that was really really neat kind of weird but it was really cool but some of those homeless camps you have to be really careful to go up to because it can be dangerous you know they protect their own they protect their belongings so you have to be careful it's best to have a liaison to go with you hi how are you so yeah um, but yeah I don't know do you guys have any other weird experiences or anything I mean that's pretty much I'm trying to think but yeah, oh yeah, we were talking about one block. So, what I forgot to tell you is, so we shot one block, and what we did was in the middle of uh, 9th Street, where he shot the series, thank you. So in the middle of one block where we shot the series, there's this alley called Alley A. And so we're like, okay, we have to incorporate this alley into the project. And so what we did was we actually turned the alley into part of the art gallery for the exhibit. We printed um, 24 by 36 prints and had them hanging down the brick wall of the alley. And then they would walk down the alley and then it would lead into the gallery itself. And so it was really cool. It was a really cool exhibit. Um, we had a lot of photos in the book so we couldn't hang and display. So we chose um, 24 of the images from the book to display in the exhibit. But it was really neat. But yeah, we had them hanging down the alley. And so nobody here in town has done anything like that. So it was really, really cool. But yeah, I don't think Lavelle's down there meeting some people. But yeah, so I could show you. Here, let's go see. You want to see the alley? We're actually very close to it. Let me see. Okay. Hold on, here we go. Here is the alley. Oh, there's a cop down there. So this is the alley that we had all the prints hanging down. So down here on the right hand side here is where we are hanging. So it was really pretty. Oh, hi. Lots of guys. Hi. Yeah, Facebook Live. Hello. Okay, so yeah. So that's where it was. It looked really, really cool, especially having them 24 by 36. I mean, his work is so good, but especially when you can see it in large format, it's like really amazing. So you'll have to see it. Um, but yeah, so do you guys, Andy, so you're in the St. Louis area then? Where are you from? Rodriguez, Siena? Selena, sorry. I don't have my glasses. I need to go get new glasses. They broke. And so I need to go get new ones. But yeah, let's see. My hands are freezing. So if you see the camera shaking, it's because my hands are freezing and shaking so let me see what Lavelli's doing oh you guys got coffee no, yeah, got my coffee. my can my hands are shaking that's what's up she's my freezing I don't know why I've been inside with the warm coffee that's not fair they had warm coffee and I'm here shaking it's okay it's not a big deal right Krista no not a big deal <laughs> it's warm we're having a good time Oh, he says I'm so pretty. Oh no, we're probably talking about <laughs> Tiffany. Anyway, yeah, we're just chilling down here. We're getting ready to go back to shoot. Uh, usually, we wait till a bunch of 
you know, normal shit goes by, and then we go out and shoot. When it gets fucking crazy, when you gotta pull, when you, when you gotta definitely bring out the, the oh yeah, there we go. Look at this. See that? When you see the ambulance start going around, that means that shit's about to go down. So, anyway, it's gonna get kind of crazy pretty soon. So, we're gonna be out shooting some stuff. It's gonna be awesome because that's what we do: shoot, shoot, shoot all day long. So I'm keeping. Sorry, not looking at the camera because I keep my eyes open for shots that I might want. So, no. What? What? Hold on. Ask, ask him. Ask him. Uh, what, what do you think? Hey, if I said she kind of fine, that's like that's like half a compliment, ain't it? Uh, I don't know. I, that's a compliment. I mean, yeah, because I mean, well, yeah, I mean, you you chose to say the cup is half full. You could have said she kind of ugly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm being positive about that's it. What's up. Yeah. That's I'm optimist. Up. That's, what's what up. that's what's up, see? That's what you got to do, you know? That's right. Be positive. Always be positive. Positive in all your endeavors. No matter what you're going through. Anyway, what, what, do you, what is she doing? Getting coffee. See you later. She's jealous. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> we're just out here looking around as always shooting. Oh God, I keep running into all these people I know. See, that's the thing about street photography. It's so awesome because you, you know, you're out shooting all the time and I shot one block here and it's really cool because I keep running into all these people that I know, like this dude right here, you know? Hey! So, what's up? <laughs> that's my boy right here. He just got his finger like sliced up because of a thing. Oh, it doesn't look that bad anymore. It looked really bad. You can see the bone. It was pretty sick. Yeah, it looks okay now, yeah. It was pretty fucking sick. Ugh. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's cool, man, because I get to see a lot of people. I run into people, you know. I, you know, I got sometimes I got to be rude, and I got to be like, oh, hey, I'm shooting something, you know. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i be back around here or something like that. But it's cool because I end up running into people, and it's, you know, you get to you get to meet a lot of people, and that's what I, basically I'm trying to say while I'm still looking for shots at the same time. But anyway, and that's why you're talking to these lovely ladies because um you know i'm out here to get shots not just do videos so anyway but i was told i have to do more videos so i'm doing more fucking videos but if you guys have any questions or anything about street photography or anything that i can help you out with on publishing or or what what you need to do with some stuff because I've, I've been in the game for a long long time uh not just for photography but in uh music and film uh when i was eight years old i was in tv shows so you know been doing this stuff for a long 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 time uh and i've been shooting since i've been probably shit like 11 or something like that on and off and on and off and on and off and it's just been a strict hobby you know and then all of a sudden you know it just turned into something just magical that just helped me get through a lot of bad times like anxiety in my life and a lot of a lot of hard things that i've been through you know so i had to give everything i have back to photography and and it's just that's what's up, you know. I mean, it just helped me get through a lot of times. Helped me focus, literally, literally looking, looking through and focusing myself, you know, manually. Helped me manually focus my life. So, you know, ooh, getting deep. What? Okay, now I'll give you back to the freezing person. Now I have my coffee, and so I can warm up my hands a little bit. Oh man, it was so so cold. Yes, I'm so cold. Maybe I'll stand in this hole. I'm gonna stand in this hole. I'm gonna stand in this hole. See? Oh! Oh, shit! I was stripped. Oh my god. Okay. But yeah. So I went and got my coffee, and I should warm up here in a second. So yeah. Um, what were we talking about? So we talked about one block. We talked about weird encounters while shooting street photography. Um. We talked about his museum, which I can't let all the details out yet, because we're going to be posting them soon. Um, talked about the exhibit this summer a little bit. Again, I can't give all the details. Um, let me see. What else? We talked about the Twitch. Um, yeah. So maybe, do you guys have any questions about maybe marketing your photography or um, maybe getting out there or... Just maybe you're new and you just don't have all the information and you you know you're interested in just uh, finding out some basic facts and you don't feel like googling them or you just want to ask a person to maybe get a straight answer I can help you there um, yeah so 
while you guys are typing or thinking about questions you might want to answer, I guess let's talk about our day. So we went, the installation for the museum just got done yesterday, so we went to go for a private preview today to see how it looks. It looks awesome. <laughs> and then we went around and took some shots while um, uh, the sun was out and for golden hour. And then we came down here, he got some shots, um, and just really shot for most of the evening. Um, and then we got coffee, ran into some people we knew. And, thank you. And so, um, yeah. So we kind of just shot today. <laughs> pretty much, I guess. Um, the installation for the museum was pretty much the highlight. Um, we're going to do some press and have a private viewing of it with a couple of people in the next couple days. And so we'll post all those photos as well. But yeah, so who do I still have in here? Andy, who else is here? Anybody? Talk to me. Lavelli's over there talking to some people, so I want to talk to you guys. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. Oh, that's hot. Um, let me see. Where can I sit down? So I just had a hip replacement um, about 12 weeks ago. to be 12 weeks on the 12th, and um, I'm doing a lot better. I had a walker for a while and I couldn't leave the house for like, I didn't leave the house for like six weeks. Um, and then after I got rid of the walker and then he was like, well, maybe you should get a cane. And so we went and we found a leopard pimp cane that I used for a while. And so, but now I'm up walking around and I'm doing really well. Um, I was pain free there for a while and I was jumping around and kind of being crazy and I'm starting to feel it a little bit but I think it's just getting the strength back from my muscles um, but yeah so we had that going on and so but I need to sit down because I've been up a lot and so I'm starting to feel it but I'm doing better and you're probably like hey you look young why did you have a hip replacement um, I won't go into all the details because it's kind of boring and it's like blah 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 but um so, if you follow Lavelli's page, you probably have heard about the cancer and stuff. So, I had some issues with breast cancer, but I'm almost two years in remission, so I'm better from that. But a lot of the treatment really hurt my uh, joints, and specifically my left hip. And so, um, last February, I had a hip scope, and it worked for a while. And then this past uh, November, I started having hip pain again and uh, found out that I had like no cartilage left in my hip at all, so I had to get a total hip replacement. So it was a pain in the ass, and it was probably the most pain I've had for all my surgeries, which is crazy, because uh, I've had a lot of them. Uh, but I'm doing better now, so I'm grateful. And I'm cancer free, and I'm not sick with anything, so I'm very, very happy. <laughs> okay, how does one get there? Flip into a gallery show with ship tarby, should I go on large prints and sell prints to order, or large prints and sell. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so galleries. Galleries are very tricky. It's all about knowing people. It's about knowing either directors or curators or other artists that have those connections. Um, they A lot of galleries will not take unsolicited work or requests, so don't call them and say, hey, I want to be in your gallery, because uh, it's 95% of the time it's not gonna work and it's just gonna be a waste of your time so uh, make relationships that's number one with as many people as you can that are influencing um, don't just attack any gallery that you find okay so um, you want to just target galleries that kind of lead towards your type of work okay so don't if there's a gallery do your research don't just call a gallery because if they just do paintings and maybe sculptures and you're asking about photography and they don't have a history of doing photography it's probably not going to be your best option so I would stick do your research make those relationships and then you're gonna have the best results let me see hi guys what's up, what's up? I'm asking I'm answering questions oh yeah yeah oh, cool yeah me and Andy right. are having a chit chat well me I'm just standing here Thanks for taking over my channel. Cause that's awesome. Cause I'm, I'm just out shooting some stuff and also talking to a couple of people. But um, I need to stop talking to people and get back to shooting. So yeah. I'm gonna have Krista talk to people so I can shoot and you can talk on here. And then see when that little blinky thing goes like that. Yeah. Connections weak. So okay, so let's move. So they're gonna move over here. 
Okay, so next part of your question, Andy, was should I focus on several large prints and sell prints to order or large itself? Well, it depends on how you're printing them, but I wouldn't keep a huge inventory of large format prints um, for a couple reasons. One, because it's expensive and um, you're probably not going to dump your inventory you know within a week or a couple weeks or months it's probably going to be spread out and you're not sure what size people are going to want so especially if they're collectors or you know I think what I find best is you know okay so this is kind of a tricky question okay so I would say have your work have some options let the person know what format what size your work looks best in you know find out print it in a couple sizes see what you like you know because there's some photography that is meant to be small there's some photography that's meant to be large and then there's some photography that looks good in both ways there's also some photography that looks better on different fibers Lavelli's for instance looks best on a certain type of silver rag fiber um, because he does black and white so you need to kind of do some experimenting and find out what fiber and what size um, and what format your work looks best in. So once you figure that out, then you can kind of lean towards and use those points to sell your work. Um, and really, it's going to increase your sales because you're going to have the best possible presentation possible for um, you know for your work and for people who. Um, you're presenting your work to whether it be a business or collectors or um, galleries so find that out too you know because um, it's really important to have your work look the best it can possibly look because you don't want to sell yourself short by printing your work on just some regular glossy paper because maybe that's not the best so do your research on some printers do your research on different fibers and find out what fibers look best for your style okay because there are uh, formats and styles that look best with different types of photography so I would do that research that's probably the best advice that I can give you and then um, really um, just make relationships word gets around fast so especially um, if there's somebody that buys your work, keep that relationship strong, you know, and because um, the word will spread. You know, word of mouth is so, so important in this industry, not just for people who are purchasing your work, but, uh, you know, like I said earlier, for galleries and museums and stuff too, his battery is at 10%. So I have a feeling we're going to have to cut this short soon. But in case the phone dies, it's been so nice talking to you guys. And um, I hope I was able to entertain you, give you some good advice, answer your questions. And now you know who I am. And so when he talks about Tiffany or Tiff, it's me. But um, yeah, but yeah, we'll probably get going here. Um, I'm going to give the phone back to Lavelli so he can say bye to you guys. And, um, and yeah, so we'll be streaming soon. If you want to work with us or be involved or want us to see your work, just his page here, facebook.com slash John Lavelli, J-O-N-L-U-V-E-L-L-I, then um, send us a message with your link and your contact information because we'd love to get in contact with you. So let me give him, uh, the phone's about to die, you want to say bye to everybody real quick? <sighs> Is that like 5%? Hey, what's up? Hey, hey guys, uh, thanks for coming by. Yeah, we'll definitely get a hold of you guys and uh, let you know what's going on with uh, Lavelli News and just everything you know and if I get some new stuff in I'll let you see this new camera that I'm getting in pretty soon and then don't forget we're also giving away a brand new uh, Fujifilm camera uh, X100T and that'll be in a couple weeks so yeah stay tuned and here's back to Tiff thanks okay guys so um, we'll see you later and um, like I said get a hold of us and we'd love to hear from you and um, it's been so nice talking to you I'm gonna go warm up my hands and uh, my nose is turning red too. I need to get into some warmth. So I'll talk to you guys soon and um, yeah, have a great night.